Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool is a new British film about the last couple of years in the life of Hollywood actress Gloria Graham. When I was a teenager, it was Gloria Graham's smouldering presence in Oklahoma in 1954 that gave me a primal jolt. She was Ado Annie, the gal who can't say no, and she stole the picture. Graham's career slowly fizzled away, and she spent a great deal of time in England, where she made a few films, and where, in 1979, she was acting in a modest West End production when she met Peter Turner, 28 years her junior, and embarked on a relationship with him. Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool is based on Turner's 1986 memoir of the same name, and centres on the off-on relationship that ended with the death of the actress from cancer in 1981. It's an intensely emotional experience, grounded in the sharp differences between this odd couple, the worldly, experienced, former Hollywood star, and the struggling actor who comes from a humble Liverpool background. The perfect casting sees Annette Bening, who was never better in this, as Graham and Jamie Bell, once upon a time the hero of Billy Elliot, teamed as the unconventional lovers. And both are superb. And they help overcome Paul McGigan's rather pedestrian direction and some questionable production design decisions that make the interior of Peter's parents' Liverpool home appear far too large. Just compare them with the interiors in Terence Davies' far more authentic Liverpoolian films. And they also make the backdrops of New York and Los Angeles far too obviously artificial. These are a little jarring, but it's to the credit of the two lead actors that the drawbacks are soon overcome as the viewer becomes engulfed in the story. The pair meet when they're both tenants in a theatrical guesthouse in London's Primrose Hill, and one of their first dates is to see the movie Alien. Peter's terrified. Gloria, or Glow as he calls her, is excited. We're allowed insight into the excitement of a young film enthusiast not only meeting an iconic Hollywood star, but making love to her, while the libido-charged Gloria is equally thrilled to find a satisfying lover who is not only young, but also devoted to her, or at least to her image. His parents, Bella, Julie Walters, again playing Jamie Bell's mother, and Joe, Kenneth Cranham, are supportive, surprisingly so. Perhaps, yet it's clear that they too are flattered to have such a famous person in their house. A visit to Gloria's mother, Vanessa Redgrave, is rather less successful, especially after Gloria's sister, Joy, Frances Barber, bitterly recalls past scandals. The affair waxes and wanes, but when Gloria finds that she's terminally ill, it's Peter to whom she turns. And so the last part of the film takes us on a painful journey we know will not end well, and which becomes deeply moving, because despite her many faults, we've come to care for Gloria Graham, a woman who lived, perhaps not wisely, but who embraced life to the full. The movie ends with actuality footage of the real Gloria, accepting her 1952 Best Supporting Actress Oscar from Edmund Gwen. She doesn't have a speech, just a muttered word, and she's off the stage. It's as if she genuinely didn't expect to be honoured. When the film premiered at the Telluride Film Festival last year, many were certain that Benning would be up for an Oscar, but she hasn't been nominated, though she did receive a nomination for a BAFTA at the British Awards. She delivers an unquestionably fine performance in a difficult role and is flawlessly supported by her co-star. They alone are reason enough to see this uneven but ultimately touching real-life romance. I'm giving it four stars. Mm-hmm.